This is the best mod list for Skyrim to completely transform the game into a well-rounded, beautiful experience without major instability, with an essential modding guide at the end. Archery Overhaul upgrades the archery gameplay experience by speeding up bow draw time, revamping the archery animations, and adding a more deadly bash attack for when enemies get too close. A selection of rings have also been added into the world that let you shoot enchanted arrows, plus arrow punctures initiate a brand new bleed system, along with a bunch of other little tweaks that add more texture to archery combat that all of you sharpshooters like me will appreciate. Ian Bs are more complex visual enhancements you can install if you really want to bring your game into the next generation of visual quality. My current favorite is Visceral Ian B because it makes Skyrim's natural beauty really shine brightly without being too visually bold. And if you don't have a higher end PC, you can still install ENBs if you're looking to use your PC as a space heater. Ultimate Combat steps up the octane of gameplay by making NPCs behave more aggressively and opportunistically in combat. It adds more variety to NPC attacks, a stagger system, timed blocking, locational damage, and many more tweaks to create more of a sense of momentum in combat all of which transforms Skyrim into an enjoyable gameplay experience. This is not an enjoyable gaming experience, you know. No! If you really like good stories and characters, not sure why you like to play Skyrim, but okay. Interesting NPCs adds a ton of uniquely voiced characters throughout the region of Skyrim, some of which with their own quest lines for you to complete. A handful of them can also become your followers. Overall, it adds a lot more flavor to exploration, gives you a little break from Skyrim's typical energy. <laughs> Convenient Horses improves horse AI, adds gear customization for your horse, an inventory system, and allows your followers to ride horses as well. Now you can even call your horse from a distance, making a hearty lunch possible anywhere. Point the way remodel Skyrim signs to actually point in the accurate direction you want to go if you don't feel like using your map. Now that we know which direction to head, let's get a move on. Wait, Campfire is a camping mod that adds portable tents, bedrolls, cooking pots, and various other items you can place and use nearly anywhere in Skyrim's wilderness. It also adds some craftable backpacks to help increase your carry weight. The mod includes a survivalism skill tree, including upgradable abilities like campfire building proficiency, animal tracking, and primitive crafting. Campfires are nice, but they're not the only way to stay warm. Help! I'm sandwiched between six naked women! Help me! Help! Folkfanger and 3D Trees and Plants both revamp the grass, trees, and brush tremendously, taking the game's natural beauty to another level. Nature is now your beautiful respite to recharge and recover from Skyrim's most stressful moments. The Jarl has oh no. To be your house, Carl. It's an honor to serve you. Are they all gonna do this? The no! <laughs> no, I have to leave! I have to go! The they blocked the door! They blocked the door! Help! <laughs> Help me! Realistic Waters 2 massively upgrades the visual quality of water, giving moist locations a more unique appearance. Rivers, lakes, oceans, you name it, they're all totally overhauled and the water improvements look so good, it'll make you want to jump right in. Ah! <laughs> I Hunt very simply automatically gets rid of UI elements when you're outside of combat so that you can take in the beauty of Skyrim undistracted. I love nature. Ordinator is a massive overhaul of the perk system in Skyrim, giving perks more of an impact on your playstyle, which makes progression much more satisfying. It also allows for more varied playthroughs from Battle Bard to Thum only violence. This mod has all kinds of surprises. Is this literally a perk to be racist? Oh no, it's a perk to make people racist. With barely any frames lost, enhanced lighting in FX overhauls the lighting system in Skyrim to be much more atmospheric and immersive. Now dungeons are darker, towns will have their own unique lighting composition, and interiors will actually be lit by windows during the day. The more realistic lighting does mean you should always remember to carry a torch when you enter a dungeon, though. Do I have a death count? <sighs> Listen, dude. All right. Um, I... Ah! Mysticism improves and balances out quite a lot in Skyrim's magic system and adds over 200 new spells into the game. Some of the more powerful spells introduced are hand placed throughout the world for you to discover. New casting options include utility spells, like being able to pick locks or walk on water. And I think it's a fitting addition to Skyrim, considering Todd is no stranger to illusion spells. All of this just works. 
There are so many great armor mods to choose from, but here are some of my absolute favorites. Hedge Mage Armor, Practical Pirate, and the Linkle Outfit. Just keep in mind, you don't want to equip these if you're playing as a dude, because, well, wow. That is wow. First set adds cozy accessories to help you stay warm, but the most immersive out of all of them has to be animal pajamas. Hey, what's up? I want attention. Oh no, not like that! But you know what outfit is unisex? My merch. Thanks to combat gameplay overhaul, now you're able to roll dodge, attack in midair, change your grip on weapons, and have much smoother combat animations. These changes even work in first person, rolling included. <laughs> this is one of my favorite mods of all time since it makes so many massive and noticeable improvements to Skyrim's underdeveloped combat system. Alternatively, sometimes I swap out combat gameplay overhaul with TK Dodge if I'm trying out a mod that is incompatible with CGO. This mod allows you to simply assign a button to be able to dodge in any direction in combat. Success not guaranteed. Cool! Not like that! Without taxing your PC, Vivid Weathers creates a much more beautiful Skyrim to explore. Beyond adding a bunch of custom effects to create more realistic weather events like thick fog, distant rain, and so on, it also adds enhanced weather-related sound effects. A touch-up to the colors and lighting in Skyrim goes a long way, and the ambient upgrades really help to capture the game's most epic moments. Oh god, what is he doing? Alduin, stop humping the rock! Amazing follower tweaks lets you recruit more than one follower and also customize the way your companions behave inside and outside of combat. Its menu has a bunch of tweaks available, including, very importantly, making your companion dance on command. The only downside is, since the recruitment number is capped at 30, I personally can't have all the followers I want. Oh sh**, what the f Again? Again? God damn. <laughs> Sekiro Combat is a small combat mod that specifically rewards you for timed blocks, giving you a big advantage if your reaction time is on point. Combat Evolve tweaks the combat to be more challenging. For instance, Poison and Magic both do more damage, making projectiles present more of a threat to you in battle. NPCs will now aggressively circle around you, making combat less leisurely. There are many improvements to enemy AI and damage, making NPC attacks deadlier and the enemies behave smarter. But really, how do you improve something like Skyrim's AI? Something that's nearly perfect. Lydia, you can't use that. It's not for you. It's like a dog pawing at the door to go out to go to the bathroom. <laughs> she thinks she's people. Yet another Skyrim hardcore mod is a gargantuan mod that totally overhauls Skyrim's difficulty. Enemies no longer scale to your level. You won't be able to immediately use all of the weapons and armor in the game. You'll need to level up your abilities first, and enemies can chase you down all around the map. Oh! What the? F How'd they get in here? Help! Somebody help! The basic premise is to start off very weak compared to nearly everything, and then eventually fight tooth and nail, leveling up your skills until you're strong enough to hold your own against nearly any foe. What am I gonna use a Magicka potion for, guys? I literally have five Magicka. <laughs> what am I gonna use it for? Since the difficulty is so much higher, it really forces you to make intelligent decisions about what skills and stats you wanna upgrade. I don't need points in health. I'm doing fine without them, okay? Nah! It isn't for everyone, but it definitely spices up any new playthrough. Master of Weapons turns the mundane objects of Skyrim into weapons you can wield, giving you access to the most powerful weapon of them all. <laughs> oh, sh Rupert is the best follower mod ever made. He's a talking teddy bear you can dress up in little outfits, and sometimes he sings little songs, and I think he pairs best with Master of Weapons. Get him, Rupert! Shovel him! Yeah! Violins adds a menu to customize the kill move camera in Skyrim, but I mainly have it installed so I can disable the unfair auto kills performed by NPCs. No! Diverse Dragons adds a slew of different dragon subtypes into Skyrim, like Earth Dragons, Lunar Dragons, and this thing. The mod even gives dragons new attacks and effects and a faster increase of difficulty in battles as you level. You'll find any excuse to experience these dragons. Can I spawn a dragon in here? 
<laughs> Helgen Reborn adds a nicely sized quest line to help you rebuild Helgen after the opening dragon attack. It has a bunch of quests, followers, and a new city all in one. This mod will have you slaying a whole bunch of enemies in unique ways across Skyrim. <laughs> the rock is the thinking person's weapon. Lean Wolf's better shaped weapons makes vanilla weapons look less like paddles and more like real weapons. Lore weapon expansion improves the appearance of a lot of weapons, as well as adding a bunch of weapons from the Elder Scrolls universe into the game. But style only takes you so far. Her? Not! <laughs> Zelda Paraglider is a mod I use on and off that puts Breath of the Wild's Paraglider into Skyrim, and it works surprisingly well. Now you can finally travel in style. Wait! Oh, no! <laughs> EVG Idols makes your character and NPCs adopt animations in reaction to certain game events like cold weather, serious injury, and, uh... Hello? What do you need? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Skyrim Reputation adds a karma system into Skyrim with different NPC reactions depending on your behavior. The more you steal, the more you'll be antagonized, but the more you kill and complete Daedric quests, the more you'll be feared. On the flip side, helping people in completing faction quests can make NPCs warm up to you faster and treat you better. There is also a mod menu where you can adjust these attributes manually, but be careful, too much fiddling can create some interesting scenarios. Mercy. I don't have to take this from the likes of you. Now, NPCs react to weather events thanks to wet and cold. For example, in snowy climates, NPCs will equip fur cloaks and hoods. In some areas of Solstheim, NPCs will wear masks. And in rainy weather, NPCs will throw on hoods, or if not manning a storefront, they'll go inside until the weather clears. So NPCs are finally able to dress appropriately for the weather. It even adds visual effects during rainstorms, guaranteed to make you and any of your companions dripping wet. Oh. Legion Replacer, Vanilla Armor Replacer, and Guard Armor Replacer all help to mix up the visual appearance of NPCs, and the armors look pretty darn nice to boot. Just keep in mind that if you install enough armor mods, something will inevitably go wrong. What is, what is happening? JK Skyrim spruces up the appearance of the region's major cities and towns by adding many more structures, giving an even more unique vibe to every location. It's mainly bug-free, but every once in a while, well... Mm. Immersive armors and immersive weapons add an enormous amount of new armors and weapons into the leveled lists with all kinds of designs for nearly any type of character. They also fit with the lore pretty nicely. Even some of the major story characters get a fashion overhaul. Report to General Tullius, is he under some of these Lydia's? True directional movement adds a lock-on system into the game along with the ability to move and attack in any direction independent from your camera's position. It even adds health bars to enemies and auto projectile aiming. You can even lock on to friendly NPCs. I'll never unlock from you, Lydia. Unique Uniques totally remodels all of the quest-specific weapons in the game, like Red Eagle's Bane and Angie's Bow, so I can go back to using my shovel instead anyway. Yeah! Noble Skyrim Retexture upgrades the landscape and architecture of Skyrim by improving the visual design and texture quality of a massive amount of assets, from farmhouses to castles to grass. Out of all of it, I'd have to say that pile of dirt is my favorite. Mortal Enemies removes unfair NPC tracking in combat, actually allowing you to evade strikes without NPCs swiveling after you. I mean, nobody likes a swiveler. Swivel away, you f***ing nerd. Swivel away! If you can! It also improves the attack cones of enemies, making their attacks line up with their actual animation frames. In order to improve the visual appearance of characters, I use Tempered Skins for Women, Sky Sight Skins for Men, Beards 2K, Superior Lore Friendly Hair, and Eyes of Beauty. I like this combination of mods because the NPC appearance doesn't deviate too far away from the original art style, especially if you hate anime girls like any reasonable person. I also have Apache Sky Hair and Chaos Hairdos to add more customization options in the character creation menu. With all of these mods, it won't take you too long to notice a big difference. This dude looks stoned into another dimension. <laughs> He's seeing into the future! Real bows redesign the vanilla bows to be less fantastical and more realistic in their appearance. With weapons that look this good, my accuracy went up 1,000%. Loser. 
The notice board and misses both give you many more potential side quests to complete in every major city in Skyrim by just inspecting a quest board near almost any town's inn. It's great if you need to make extra money to pay for the sixth re-release of Skyrim. Bandolier adds different pouches and satchels that add carry weight to your character that look very subtle and stylish. You know, there's probably enough space in some of these for a parachute. Rustic Clutter Clothing and Potions all upgrade the textures of lots of common items in Skyrim, from tunics to potions to plates. Book covers of Skyrim also improves the texture quality of books in the game. These really help the game feel that much more real. Come, let me show I love how he just pulls it out of his it's right here. and then it changes Sky a different color. Even. Faster swinging greatswords increases the speed of two-handed swords, making it a much more viable playstyle. Dorks. No BS projectile dodge simply removes the ridiculous instant sidestep NPCs often perform after shooting a projectile at them. No, what? What? Amidian Born Book of Silence modernizes the textures of monsters, weapons, and armor. Strange these additions weren't included in the special edition already. Well, I guess it can be forgiven since Bethesda was too busy with perfecting their follow-up game. Uh. Never mind. Both audio overhaul and reverb and ambience overhaul massively improve the sound quality and variety in Skyrim. Now, forests sound more lively. Caves and large halls produce more of an echo, and fireballs have a lot more pop. Let's see. Oh, God! <laughs> Run and walk at your own pace lets you walk at a less frustratingly slow speed compared to NPCs, boosting Skyrim's immersive energy. The Parthenax Dilemma adds a choice to spare Parthenax at the end of the game so that you can ignore it and kill him anyway. Skyrim Unbound Reborn is an alternate start mod that lets you skip past Skyrim's opening sequence and select different starting locations, items, and attributes for your character to fully customize the beginning of your game. Choose carefully because a completely randomized start does have a chance of making you spawn naked in the woods, which is surprisingly not as fun as it sounds. <laughs> Immersive Patrols adds little gangs of Skyrim's factions wandering together all around the map, sometimes even getting into battles with each other. It definitely makes Skyrim feel a lot less empty and uh, more vocal. Because citizen, move along. along. You. Step aside, citizen. Move citizen. along. Move along. This is none of your concerns. Move along. Beyond Skyrim Bruma is one of my favorite quest mods ever, as it adds a massive new area to explore that is also packed with quests. With this mod, you venture into Cyrodiil and help the people of Bruma fight off all kinds of new enemies in a bunch of different environments. It's also great to know that the team behind Beyond Skyrim Bruma is planning to add many more expansions like this in the future, especially considering we're not getting the next Elder Scrolls anytime soon. How many more editions of Skyrim, Todd? How many must we buy? A total essential, Sky UI cleans up the appearance of the menus to showcase more information more efficiently. These improvements are particularly noticeable if you play with a mouse and keyboard. It also gives you a menu to adjust the settings of each of your installed mods. It even has a search bar to find exactly what you're looking for. RS Children makes children appear significantly less deformed and individual child characters appear more unique with many more hairstyles and clothing choices so you can tell the difference between every creepy child. Who doesn't want kids to be living their best life? I'm so hungry. It's oh, I can't give her more money. Instead of three gold coins, here is some poison. And uh, maybe if you kill an adult, you can steal their house. Good luck. Love to help those in need. It's what I do. Maybe if she kills Nazim, she can live in the Cloud District. She's about to get to the Cloud District very often. These next couple mods aren't necessary if you have the Anniversary Edition and are already using Survival Mode, but they might be worth trying out anyway. Frostfall adds a temperature-based survival system that requires you to warm yourself in frigid climates. The colder and more wet the environment, the more quickly you'll lose body heat until you start experiencing status effects until you eventually freeze to death. You can prevent this by building a fire, taking shelter from the rain, wearing warm clothing, consuming some hot soup, or by sleeping in a bedroll. There is also a mod menu that lets you customize how hardcore the experience is. Basically, it turns Skyrim into the long dark, but with smaller bears. <laughs> Did you see how that raw? 
dog did nothing? Similarly, I Need gives you time-sensitive hunger, thirst, and fatigue stats that you have to manage by consuming water, food, and by sleeping once in a while. Diseases are another addition of this mod. They also affect your stats and can be contracted from wild animals or by drinking unclean water. This mod definitely gives you a more robust incentive to seek out sustenance, and so it's great that NPCs usually just leave food lying around. Last Seed is a very similar mod you might enjoy, although it is definitely more buggy, but it has more features than I need, some of which are pretty entertaining. If you consume raw meat and seafood, spoiled food, or dirty water, there is a chance you might catch a disease. Bring it on. Where are you at, Giardia? Where are you at, bitch? You succumb to your failing health. Oh no! <laughs> Overall, these are both great mods if you like to pretend to care about your health. Joy of Perspective is an outdated mod that lets you see your character's body in first person, and sometimes it doesn't work, but I use it anyway. Simply Balanced gives you a mod menu where you can tweak almost all the different components of combat, magic, skills, potions, and even aspects of leveling. With this mod, you can make Skyrim the game it was always meant to be. Balance damage down to zero. It's simple. The unofficial Skyrim patch, cutting room floor, and static mesh improvement mod basically just fix and add a bunch of stuff from quest bugs to visual glitches that Bethesda just didn't bother to patch. HD LODs improves the appearance of distant textures. No snow under roofs, removes snow, NPCs probably should have shoveled the way. The choice is yours, prevents some quests from automatically starting, and gives you the choice to deny or walk away from the ones you don't want to do. Improved close-faced helmets lets you actually see NPC faces through the openings in their helmets. A quality world map retextures the game's map. Designs of the Nords upgrades the textures of Skyrim's banners. Real Mountains Rebuilt makes mountains look even better. Main menu spinning emblem go burr. And enhanced blood textures retextures blood to look more high quality and spill out more immersively, which I personally find to be absolutely essential. <coughs> I feel like I'm drowning. Here are some crucial tips to remember if you choose to install any of these mods. Many of the mods in this list require SKSE, which you must launch Skyrim from in order for it to work. There will be a link to it and a guide in the description. Use Loot, another application to help you sort through your mods to reduce the chance of them conflicting with one another. And use a mod manager if you're planning to install a lot of mods. I personally use Mod Organizer too, I love it, and I'm not planning to switch anytime soon, but I also have heard very good things about Vortex. Hit the bell so you can stop by my live streams on YouTube if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. There is also a link to my Discord where you can ask questions as well. Read the readmes, what a concept. Since this list is smaller, I personally barely ever get crashed to desktops or major game breaking bugs. If you're new to modding, start small and build out from there. Because of the anniversary edition, some of these mods may not necessarily work immediately before they're patched, which is probably a ploy by Todd to make us actually buy Skyrim for the Switch. Give me some money on Patreon or become a member of the channel to manifest some positive karmic energy. If you get a crash on launch, it probably means a specific mod is the culprit. Deactivate them one by one until you find which one is causing this. Check out my mod list playlist because I have featured many more mods than those included in this video. Before launching your game, do what I do, which is to throw your hands together and pray. And the final tip, it's okay to cry. Like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon. My name is Kubitz, and thank you so much for watching.